guys, I'm Nomadic, and today we're at the third episode of the Ableton series. Just like I say in every video, if this is your first time, start right back at the first episode so you can see how things have progressed up until this point. So today, we're gonna be talking about chopping. And a lot of programs, I feel like, have tried to chop um, in various ways, but with the new Ableton um, 9.5, actually, they have this instrument called Simpler, and they came out with these new upgrades to the Simpler plugin in Ableton that really like stepped up um, the DAW chopping. And it really reminded me a lot of the MPC workflow and how things, how things work in, in the MPC. And that's actually, this, this, this thing called Simpler is actually the main reason why I love Ableton now. Like if it wasn't for Simpler, it wouldn't quite do it for me, but like this thing is, is amazing. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I use it in this episode, so check it out. Okay, so now that we have our guitar loop set, we're gonna talk about how we can take something that we've warped nicely and how we can turn that into something that you can actually chop like an MPC. So I'm gonna go to this MIDI track over here and I'm gonna go through the instruments and I'm gonna pull out this thing called Simpler. And simpler is this, is this it's, it's basically an effect, or not an effect, it's an instrument that sort of has parameters that is very familiar with the way the MPC works. And I'll show you how this works. So you just drag and drop it on the MIDI track because it's an instrument, that's why you're putting it on the MIDI track. And you wanna drag and drop the sample that we cropped already over here into the simpler. So you just drag and drop it here. And basically what you're gonna do is on the screen, you have options to just hear the whole thing straight through and make sure that this button down here is armed so you can actually play it on your keyboard. So if you go options, make sure computer MIDI keyboard is selected and you can just kind of play it on your keyboard. Going up an octave. It kind of just plays high or low based on what notes you hit. Now, the thing that will make it like an NPC is the button that says slice. So if you click slice, you can see it automatically just cuts it up for you. And you can pick how you want to cut it, just like on the NPC. You can pick if you want to have it chopped by transients, which is like peaks in the waveform, which is usually when, when notes are, are struck or, or drums are struck. That's usually like the, the premise behind the transient slicing. Or you can change it to beat, which is basically going to cut it in whatever increment of a beat you want. So like if I wanted it to, to cut every half of a beat, you could just play it on your keyboard and you'll be able to hear that the timing is all appropriate because we already warped it to the BPM. So it's like, it's the timing is perfect. So if I wanted to, you know, actually chop this, I'd probably just use transient and I would just turn the sensitivity down so I don't have as many pieces. And you can see the blue lines kind of just start to disappear. So I'm getting bigger pieces. So I have more stuff to work with here. So let's say I wanted to record that, right? So all you need to do in this screen is you need to just click click the circle button and you can just record whatever it is you you want to play so for me i just want to make sure i have like a count in like a four bar count in before i record so i'm just going to go up here to the metronome i'm going to click the arrow i'm going to make sure one bar count in is selected so i can kind of just prepare to chop it to the bpm so i'm just going to record something right now oops i'm going to turn this off and I'm gonna do that again. So if you double click it, you can view how you played it. So this is this is the MIDI data, so you can you can just see how it is. And it looks pretty good, everything looks pretty pretty on time. If you hit the space button, you can hear it again. Sounds pretty good. So let's say I wanted to chop it again, right? I wanted to have like, uh, 
just another another variation. And this is actually the reason why I like to build on on the session view versus the arrangement view. The reason why is because if I wanted to record another one, all I really had to do was go down uh, one little box, and if I click the circle button, I can record another. I can record another clip within the same track. So it's like if I have a lot of ideas and I'm not sure if I like it or not, I can save all those ideas within this one track. So it's like maybe like today I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this like three times. I'm going to have three different variations of it. And I'm not really sure which one sounds the best, but you could go back and listen to it tomorrow and then realize, oh, like the third one sounds really great. So I'm just going to record another another instance of this, just another another chop. So, I don't know, just another another variation. Um and then one thing I want to do is I want to fix the timing. So like this thing might be a little bit off, so I could just slide that over and shift it. Or if I wanted to, I could use quantization. Quantization basically takes all the MIDI notes that you dropped and it puts it right on the grid. So it's like, it, it improves the timing, right? So to do that, you just hit Control A or you can just select all the notes, right click, quantize, but let's go to the settings first to make sure we're happy with it. And right now it's set to quantize, basically meaning that it's gonna take all the notes, it's gonna snap it to the nearest one eighth of a bar and it's going to do it 80%, not 100%. 100% is going to be perfectly on the grid. And it's nice to have like a little bit less than 100 so it doesn't like sound too perfect. It's totally up to style, it's totally up to however you like it to sound. So I'm just going to have it 80% so we can see what this looks like. And now it's a lot more on the grid, so. So yeah, there's that. All right guys, I hope that was helpful. Next week we're gonna talk a little bit more about chopping and we're gonna combine chopping and warping together within Simpler so you can kind of see how to use Simpler a little bit better than just from this episode alone. So I'll see you next week.